If you thought the editing was hard, oh, wait to see what's up and coming. Just you wait. Hello, my bookworms and my fellow writers, and welcome to the fourth video in my Madness of Publishing series. Today is all about the cover letter. We are talking about you. So you've completed your novel. It is 100% done. You've also done your four edits, and you have gathered a list of possible agents you would love to work with, or you know, not love to work with, but just want to send it out anyways. All those things are done, and the next thing, getting your cover letter. The cover letter. I struggled with that, and maybe it's because I don't like talking about myself. I have trouble talking about myself that I really did, you know, struggle with this. So if you are someone who enjoys talking about themselves, you will breathe through this. But, you know, watch anyways. The cover letter. What is it? Why do I need it? Well, let me tell you. The cover letter is going to be the very first thing these agents see. Most agents today only accept online submissions. They don't take, you know, the mail forms anymore because, well, one, you're killing the trees, and two, it just ends in a slush pile. At least if it's email, they can delete it really fast or read it really fast. In the body of the email, at least I'm sure that's where you know where you can type your little message, but you know, in there, that is where your cover letter is going to go. That is going to be the first thing they see. If they don't like it or if it is laced with errors, they're just going to delete your email. They won't even look at your synopsis. That alone makes the cover letter the most important thing because that's going to be what pulls in the agent. That's going to be the thing that makes them think they're like, I'm kind of interested. Let me see what this synopsis is about. And then they'll click the file. It will open. And then they'll get to read it and realize how awesome you are and then take you on, hopefully. As to what the cover letter actually is, it is you talking about yourself to a degree. It's not you, you know, going over your childhood unless if that pertains to the story. It's not about you going, oh, yeah, I used to totally, you know, do creative writing in high school and I rocked it. They don't care. Well, yes, it is about you. You are also going to mention your story because that's going to be what hooks them. So you want to have that hook there. And you're also going to talk about any publications you might have had. There is a rule to that. If you've, say, been published in your high school newspaper, and you're not in high school anymore. You're like me. You're 25 years old. You graduated back in 2007. They don't care. If you've published something online through a website like Figment, they don't care. Don't put that in there. Also, do not lie. They can look this up. They have connections. They do talk to one another and they will know if you are lying and then you've just, you've ruined everything. The things you are going to want to add is if you've been published in, say, a magazine, if you've previously been published, whether it be novel or short stories, whatever it is, as long as you've been published and they can go look and it isn't a free online website of some sort, then yes. Add that in there. If it's something that you've specialized in, like say you are a historian that is really good with the Victorian era and your novel takes place in the Victorian era, add that in to your qualifications as to why I could write this story. The one thing you do need to know about your cover letter, short and sweet. You don't want to babble. You don't want to bore them to death. You don't want them to dislocate their jaw from yawning. Short and sweet. At most, your cover letter should be four paragraphs long, and think of it like a letter so two of them don't even really count, so two paragraphs really. Okay. The first paragraph is your greeting, your dear so-and-so, though if you do happen to write so-and-so, before you send it out, add the agent's name. Don't send it out as so-and-so or send it out with the wrong name. Check that. Your second paragraph is the introduction. You're introducing yourself, you're introducing your story, you're creating that hook that makes them want to read more. You don't want to babble though. Don't give away the entire synopsis because that's why you're going to be writing the synopsis. If they're interested by the hook you've given them, they will click the synopsis, they will read the synopsis. If they're even interested in that, then they will ask you for the manuscript after reading the first three chapters. The third paragraph is only for the people who have previously been published who can sit there and say, I have qualifications in this genre type that I am the person to write this story. If you don't have qualifications in, say, like history or something like that, don't say anything. Don't lie. Don't be like, oh, yeah, I totally did this before. Don't just sit there and be like, yeah, because you feel like you have to put something in. Say, yeah, I wrote for my school newspaper. I took journalism. I, I did a history class. I 
happened to the Victoria and Albert Museum. Don't say that. They don't care. Don't do it. All in all, if you don't have anything to say, leave it blank. It's perfectly fine. In researching this, I have seen a few people say that in that paragraph you can say, you know, I've never had anything published previously. I'm an aspiring author. You know, I really hope you take a look at my stuff type of thing. Though, personally, I would just leave it blank. Your last and final paragraph is going to be the closing paragraph where you say thank you for taking the time to read my work. Sincerely, your name. That's it. That is your cover letter. And yes, it seems like it would be like quite an easy task. But when you sit down and you try to write it out and you have to condense your synopsis into about two sentences, yeah, it's not that fun. It's not. I've given you guys a few things you need to remember about all of this, so I'm going to briefly go over that again and add a few more things. Keep it short and sweet. Don't babble. Four paragraphs tops. If you don't have anything published previously, leave it blank. Don't lie. In your draft where you say, dear so-and-so, don't forget to change the name because nothing is more insulting than being called so-and-so. Don't tell everything about your story. Just give the title, give a brief little synopsis. Do not include a word count because they don't like that apparently. The Writer's Digest Agent Market thingamajig book. I, I've mentioned it before, but it lies to you about that. They don't care about the word counts. They can see the number of pages you have. Do not say that you are the next upcoming Cassandra Clare, J.K. Rowling, Stephanie Meyer, E.L. James. I think that's her name. Is she the one who wrote Fifty Shades of Grey? I don't know, but her name's been mentioned a lot, but don't say you're the next upcoming. Don't do that. Don't compare your book to other novels. So now I'll read to you guys my cover letter so that you guys can get a basic understanding of what should be there, what shouldn't be there. Dear so-and-so, don't forget to change that. My name is Erica Lisher, and I'm an emerging writer. Please find and close the first three chapters of my novel, Hunted, Book One in the Natural Disasters Trilogy. Hunted is a story that takes place in the early Victorian era. Ashling Malone is a survivor of the Great Irish Famine. She also holds an ability she does not know she has yet. Taken into an aristocratic home, Ashling is introduced to a rich lifestyle of London life, but even that cannot keep her safe from the religious order that is hunting her kind. Thank you for taking the time to read my work. I look forward to hearing back from you. Sincerely, Eric. I have three paragraphs. That's it. I've given a nice little synopsis of my novel and let them know that it is part of a trilogy. That's really important as well if your book is going to be a duology, a trilogy, a series book, whatever it is. Be sure to mention that because usually that will lure them in a bit more. So that is your cover letter. After you've written it, do edit it. After it's written, leave it alone for about a week, go back, edit it. This is the type that you're going to want to read backwards. When I did my editing video, I did mention reading backwards. Because this is so short, it shouldn't give you as much of a struggle as it would reading a novel backwards. So do give that a try. You will catch the spellings easily, comma mistakes, the whole nine yards. So try reading that backwards. Read it out loud. See how it sounds. Be sure to edit it, though. It is the first thing your agent's going to see. So I'm going to leave you guys with a task at hand. And basically what I'm wanting you to do is tell me about your story down in the comments. Write a synopsis about it. Let me know about your main characters, you know, the plot line, what is happening. Don't tell me the ending, but you know, give me the synopsis. So that's my video about the cover letters. Let me know how you get on with them, if there were a struggle for you like it was for me. Although, you know, after realizing I didn't have to add anything in that third paragraph, it became a bit easier, so yeah. Let me know below. Don't forget to tell me about your story. Start working on a synopsis. And until then, you guys, bye!